Whenever I see these kind of big price movements, I think about whether there's a way for me to have identified them in advance and got in early to capture the majority of the move. Often these happen because of news events, which makes them very difficult to predict. They also happen really quickly, so getting in and out of the trade manually would be very difficult. But I wanted to see if it's possible to automate this, so I've built my own scalping bot. I'm going to explain how it works, how I tested it, and how I am deploying it. The aim of the bot is to somehow capture these big price movements. And to be able to do that, I have to first of all define some conditions, something that I'm looking for within the price action that tells me that there's a chance that price is going to move quickly. While this kind of stuff is obvious in hindsight, you can see where price started, where it moved aggressively, and where it finished, it's much more difficult to predict that in advance. The first thing that I thought about was perhaps I could just look at the size of the candles. For example, this is the five minute chart. All the candles to the left are pretty normal average size candles, but they look really small because of the size of this momentum move. This means that one thing I could check for is the size of each candle. Basically, whenever a candle closes, like this one here, I can look at the overall size from the open to the close, and I can compare that range to the average over the previous, say, 20 or 30 candles. And that would be a pretty good indicator. At the very least, that's going to tell me which candles are significantly bigger than the average. This means that if I identify this candle as my momentum, then I could enter at the open of the next candle. The problem here though is that I've already missed a large part of the move by the time this has happened. So my entry signals are going to come late, or at least a lot later than I want them to. I want to be getting in at the start of the move. The other downside is that while in this particular instance the price then continued to make two more really big green candles, a lot of the time after a big push there is a reversal back down. And in that case the last thing I want to be doing is buying right around here and then being left as the price moves away back down. This approach wasn't going to work, and I needed a different way of being able to identify these big momentum moves. So my approach is rather than waiting for a candle to close and then look at how big it is, instead I'm going to continuously monitor the price as it comes in. I need to combine the overall price movement with the speed. So basically, I'm looking to calculate the velocity of the price. To do that, I'm constantly monitoring the price on a tick by tick basis, but I also measure the time in between each of those ticks. And what I'm looking for is a sudden and big move within a short period of time. In my specific example, and, and in the bot that I'm using right now, my entry condition is a movement of three points within a period of three seconds. When the bot detects this movement, it acts as a trigger that price is moving quickly and this could be the beginning of a big momentum move. That means that the overall move doesn't concern me as far as the entry conditions go. Instead, for a candle like this, it's likely that there would have been a very sharp move right at the beginning. And that means that my entry could have been a lot closer to the bottom of the candle, giving me far more upside potential if the price really did take off. So that's the theory, but how do I actually implement any of this? The first challenge was getting the price data. I need a constant stream of price data. My broker API has a pricing stream which I can use for this. What I do is connect to the stream and then I receive every single tick that comes through it. That means that I'm not worried about timeframes and different candles. I'm getting real-time price data from this stream. I can then use that pricing stream to calculate that velocity that I spoke about. So once I have my trigger condition, the bot will automatically go long. It will place a 15 point stop loss and 15 point take profit, aiming for a one to one risk to reward. The way I arrived at all of these numbers is through backtesting. Because while my bot is running and receiving this data stream from my broker, it is constantly storing that and logging it inside of a CSV file. So over time, I'm building up a massive database of tick-based data for my instruments. I can then run backtests on this to see what the best parameters are. And this is my backtest results. I've got various columns like my move threshold, which is the size of the price move that I'm looking for as well as the window in seconds. So that's the duration of the move. And this is where that three point move within three seconds actually comes from. After that, I have my stop loss and take profit, both of which are 15 points. I then have the number of trades of 64, a win rate of 56%, as well as the overall profit, the average and the profit factor. I rerun this backtest multiple times with different parameters, like trying out a move threshold of three, five, 
and 7 points, as well as a window of 3 seconds, 5 seconds, and 10 seconds. I then do the same with stop loss and take profits, and you'll notice that they vary from 15, 10, and 5. The results for all of these combinations are then sorted in this table, meaning that the best ones are at the top. And that's why I'm currently using in my bot the entry condition of 3 points within 3 seconds and a stop loss and take profit of 15 points each. However, I've only been running this strategy and collecting data for a short period of time, so my sample size is not huge, and as you can see, this one only has 64 trades. That means that as I collect more data and I rerun these, it's likely that all of these are going to move around and change order. Based on my backtest, I'm currently only trading long positions. This means that if price is moving up quickly, then I go long to try and capture that momentum. But if price drops suddenly instead, like I did in this example here, then I still go long in the hopes of catching a reversal. This may seem a bit odd, but for now, that's what my data is telling me is the best setup. As I run the bot longer and backtest with more data, it's likely that I will change how I trade it. So far, I've only been running this bot on the S&P 500. And while initially it has given me good results, one of the limitations has been that it doesn't generate that many trades. Some days I've had no trades at all if the market's been quiet. So to try and improve this, I've added two more instruments to increase the number of trade opportunities. The pound dollar, as well as the dollar versus the Japanese yen. Both of these are good candidates as they have decent volatility, but they also have good liquidity and tight spreads. This is a strategy that's still in development and I can't say for sure yet if it's profitable or not. But I wanted to try out different ideas and see what works. If you want to see how this one progresses, then hit subscribe to follow for regular updates.